Hey teachers, so in one of the very first videos that I ever uploaded to this channel, I shared with you how to create interactive worksheets using Google Slides. And since I posted that video over a year ago, there have been new add-ons released to Google Slides that are literally a game changer and will save you so much time. So this video is an update from what I shared with you back then and I'm going to show you the quick easy way to start creating interactive Google Slides for your students. The Slides Toolbox add-on has been such a game changer for me. I cannot tell you how much time it is saving me and I can't wait to share it with you so that you can save time creating these interactive Google Slides for your students too. So let's go ahead and jump on my computer. I'll show you how to download the add-on and then how to use it to create your interactive Google Slides. We are starting in PowerPoint, not in Slides. And if you watched the previous video that I made all about how to create interactive Google Slide worksheets, the reason for that is because we have to upload everything to Google Slides as images to make sure that students can't move the things that we don't want them to move and interact with. So these are several interactive worksheets and assessments that I created all about early explorers and you can see as they are right now if i click on pretty much anything i can drag it which we don't want to happen inside of google slides so what we want to do is we want to save this whole presentation as jpeg images so all we're going to do is go to file save as and then i am just going to save it to my desktop, and remember to save it as a JPEG file. So you're gonna click save, and it's gonna ask you if you want to do just one slide or all of them. We want all of them. And when you click all of them, that means that all of these are saved as JPEGs in that file. So now we can go over to Google Slides, and as you can see, I've got a Google Slides presentation pulled up here. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure the slides are the right size for the JPEGs that we are going to overlay on them. So to do that, we need to go to File and Page Setup, and then we're gonna click Custom, and change the size to eight and a half by 11, which is the standard paper size, which is what we created inside of uh, PowerPoint. Now, the tool that I have found that has been an absolute game changer is a Google Slides add-on. And so to add this tool to your Google Slides, you're gonna come up here to add-ons and you're going to click get add-ons. And this is basically, the way I describe this is it's basically like the app store for Google Slides. And it's so cool because basically anything you want to do inside of Google Slides, you can find an add-on to help you do it. So for this, we're gonna come up here to where it says search and we're gonna click, or we're gonna search for slides toolbox. And you'll see it comes up here. Now I already have it installed on my Google Slides, but if you do not, um, you'll just click, it will say install here instead of uninstall, and you'll just click on that. Now, once you have this loaded onto your Google Slides, anytime that you wanna use it, you'll just click on add-ons again, and you'll see I have Slides Toolbox here and you'll go ahead and open it. Now notice it says upgrade to premium. You really don't need to do that. There are so many functions and features that you can use just with the free version. So go ahead and click open and you'll see this toolbar pop up here. And let me tell you, once you get this add-on, you are going to want to explore all of these features because there are some seriously cool things that you can do inside of Google Slides with this. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna show you how to create these interactive worksheets. So we're gonna click on Import Tools, and we're going to create the slides from images. So click on this, and then you will see this box 
pop up here. It is already going to be marked as a single image. Just keep it here. And what that means is there's going to be one image on each slide. And then the other thing you want to make sure you do is check set as page background. And the reason that you want to do that is because when you apply the images as backgrounds, they are going to be, it's almost like taking the image and gluing it to the slide. Then students can't move the borders or the text in any way like I was showing you in PowerPoint. It's all going to be static and stuck there. So then you'll click next and all you're going to do is upload those images that uh, you had saved before. So I've got them here. And if you just click on all of them and click open, you'll see all of those appear here. And then you're going to click upload. And it might take, depending on how many slides you have, it could take a few minutes. I, I had one where it was, it was quite a few and it took several minutes. But if you just have a few, it will just take a couple of seconds. Okay, now you will notice that my images appeared over here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this blank slide and you will see here are all of the images that I saved. And you'll notice that when I click on these slides, the students can't move the text, they can't move the border. Like I said, it's almost like we took those images and we glued them to the slide. So now you have got your worksheets made. So all you have to do now is add some interactive components and I'll show you a few options that you can do. Now for a worksheet like this, what I would do is go ahead and apply all of the text boxes so that way all students would have to do is click and start typing. So I could put a text box here and if you want students to just be able to click and start typing, think about where you want it to go. So I want this to be centered and I want this to be a little bit bigger and bolder since this is a title. So you can see that when they start typing now it will be a little bit bigger whereas down here when I insert the text boxes. I'm going to keep everything aligned to the left and I'm going to keep the font much smaller. So I'll go ahead and put these text boxes here. And to be honest, it looks like there's nothing there, but when students click, they can automatically start typing. So that is one interactive feature that you can add to these. And I want to show you another interactive feature. Okay, so this is a multiple choice assessment. And what I like to do, because it can be really hard for students to create circles using the shapes tool, a lot of times what I noticed would happen, one, they're not um, hollow on the inside, and a lot of times when students are dragging, they'll overlap multiple options, and then it's just, it's hard to see what exactly they were trying to circle. So what I have done when it's a multiple choice like this is I'll create a shape such as an arrow and I will leave this arrow on the slide and then when students go to answer these questions, they will just drag and drop the arrow next to the correct answer. So I would have an arrow next to each question and then when the student got to it, they would just drag and drop for each question. So those are a couple of ways that you can make your slides interactive. And then make sure when you share this with your students that you share a copy with them and not the actual presentation because if you share the presentation, if one student moves this arrow, it's gonna move it on every student's presentation. So make sure you share a copy. And if you're not sure how to do that, make sure you look down in the description because I have a video all about the right way to share Google Slides with your students. So I hope this information is a as much of a game changer for you as it has been for me. And I would love to hear what are you creating 
for your students when you use this add-on? Are you creating um, worksheets for a specific subject? Are you creating virtual book club activities? What are you creating? Let me know in the comments and then make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel because I am uploading new videos all the time and I don't want you to miss out on any of them. So until next time, happy teaching.